take this opportunity to welcome you to Group 935. This is a prestigious moment in the history of our race. You represent the future of technological advancement. You are the pioneers of human discovery. In your hands lies the destiny of mankind. In our hands is a great power, and with that power, comes a price. You have volunteered to be part of this great experiment, and with that decision comes the responsibility of absolute secrecy. No one is to know what you do, where you work, what our research has uncovered, or what our purpose will be. You will have no further contact with your governments or with your families. Your decision to fully dedicate your lives to Group 935 is absolute. In your lockers, you will find your field ops manual, which will direct you should our manifesto get compromised. We cannot afford to let this power fall into the wrong hands, and therefore the field ops manual should be considered your Bible. Make your preparations now. A new dawn is beginning for mankind. Now, you must be very diligent, Mr. Samantha. Owning a dog is a great responsibility. Yes, Father. Oh, I love her. You must feed her every day and walk her and be very careful when you play with her. You know she's going to have puppies. Really? Can I get the puppies too, Father? We'll see, Samantha. One step at a time. Initiating test number three. Subject is within the test chamber. Activate power. Oh my god! Can you hold yourself and clean that up? Test number three. Unsuccessful. Test subject has been reduced to the same state as previous subjects. Clean up the test chamber and recalibrate the system! Let's do it again. Yes, Doctor. Edward, tie the damn thing down! We can't have it running around during the test! It's tied down now, Dr. Maxis. Initiating test number five. Subject is within the test chamber. Activate power. Searching for Vitus. No reading, Doctor. The subject has disappeared. Dr. Maxis, we've done it! Don't be foolish! Test number five is unsuccessful. Subject has vanished, yes, but has not reappeared at the mainframe. Recalibrate the damn system! Now! Stand up. Stand up! Good. Look at me. Over here! Good. Now walk forward. Hey, 
Excellent. Further. Keep coming. It's all right. Stay there. Calm down. I order you. Kill it. Bring me another. Sophia, this letter is to go to the Reichstag High Command immediately. Gentlemen, it is with the utmost urgency that I draw your attention to the lack of funding being injected into the giant project. While I believe we are close to realizing the ultimate plan, we still have several years of development before it is ready. It would be folly to cut our expenditure so early in our development. As you know, early tests on the DG2 have easily outperformed expectations, and we fully anticipate mass-producing the Wunderwaffe within the next few years. Work on the matter transference has, however, come to a standstill. We simply do not have enough Element 115 to continue the experiments. The test subjects have survived the teleportation, but are currently unresponsive to commands and cannot be controlled. If we are to overcome this obstacle, we need to increase the frequency and size of the experiment. To this end, I suggest we find not only a regular supply of 115, but that we also find a larger conduit to channel the energy. Our operatives in America have informed us that the U.S. has a large supply of the element at the Nevada base. So time is of the essence if we are to stay ahead of them. This cannot be done if you cut the budget, nor can it be done if you insist on pressuring us into action before we are ready. I am, of course, available for discussion on the matter, but in the meantime, I will continue with the work here and try to win this damned war. Signed, etc., etc., Dr. Maxis. Initiating test number six. Subject is within test chamber. Activate power. Damn it, Edward! Did you set up the device correctly? Yes, Doctor. As per your specifications. If you had done it to my specifications, then it would have worked, wouldn't it? As usual, your incompetence has... What? Do you hear that, Doctor? Quiet, you fool! Test number six is a failure, but the experiment has caused some kind of electrical force to energize within the chamber. Well, open the door! Doctor, I don't think... Open the door! Now! Daddy, what are you doing with this Damn it, Samantha! I told you never to come in here! Edward! Get her out of here. Yes, Doctor. What's wrong with her? Daddy, what did you do? Lassie! Come back here, Samantha! Stop her! Easy! Come here, Samantha. Good girl, Flossie. Gently, Samantha. That's not Flossie anymore. We must get out of here. What? Edward, what are you doing? Open the door! Edward, open this door now! Dad, I'm scared! Don't go! Stay by me, Samantha! Goodbye, Dr. Maxis. <laughs> But I'm all out of hope. Auf Wiedersehen, my friend. Warning! The shield is now active. Damn it! I can't find my pills. They are coming. I must do what I must do. God forgive us all. To destroy our designated materials and report to the barracks. I have been assured that given time, the programming will be
I can verify the certainty, however. 
that the barrier is not located in the screen. Dr. continue no matter the cost. I wonder what he might think of the experiment, the little girl. <laughs> Transference prototype is prepared for test run number 151. We have now reduced our test subject's mass to prove that this is possible. Dr. Schuster, please give an overview. Yes, Dr. Richthofen. We have the new test subject, a walnut, weighing in at 10 grams. The target platform is now at 3 feet with no obstructions. We have one microgram of the element which, according to our calculations, will be entirely used up during tests. Excellent, Dr. Schuster. Commence test number 151. Yes, Doctor. Uh, please, insert your earplugs. Good God! We've done it! We have powered up the prototype and have moved a walnut directly from the prototype device into the receiving device. It moved instantly. It... it teleported. 
Get me Dr. Maxis immediately. But this is not the crucial experiments that you are supposed to be working on. With all due respect, Dr. Maxis, this is a breakthrough of unimaginable proportions. What? That you moved the wall not a few feet. Yes, Edward. We will improve the human condition by revolutionizing the walnut industry. I can see it now. Edward's walnut delivery. Don't be obtuse. How dare you call me that? We are at war, Edward. I will admit that there is promise here. But until this war is won... Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Maxis. But Group 935 is a research organization. What was the motto? To improve the human condition? What business of ours is this war? Fine, Dr. Richtofen. I will let you in on a little administrative secret. We are finalizing a deal with the Nazi party. We need funding. We need equipment. They need new weapons. Chances are this war will end soon with a treaty or two, and we will be in a much better position to help the world. Are you certain this won't cause massive defections? We have scientists from all over the world working with us. That is why it is with the utmost confidence that I share this with you. No one will know of this. This is simply the breaking of an egg to make an omelette. Think of the tactical advantage we would have. Think of the cost. Think of the time. We can provide the Nazis technical expertise in various areas without putting all our eggs in your walnut basket. Good day, Edvard, and get back to your real work. Bloody jerk. I think Dr. Maxis has lost his perspective. No matter. We'll do this on our own and publish the findings before he has a chance to. You're not suggesting that Dr. Maxis would steal this technology and perfect it without us, are you? I would by no means discourage that thought. Great scientists must stick together and achieve great science. Entry 42. Date, January 4, 1940. Dr. Schuster and I, despite mounting pressure from Dr. Maxis, have continued working on the matter transference prototype. We have made great strides in the last 30 days and are ready for our first human subject. If our calculations are correct, we will send a test subject, me, to the receptacle station sitting 30 yards away and behind a cinder block wall. Are you certain you want to do this, Dr. Richtofen? Nein, Dr. Schuster. But this must be done. Quickly, put in your earplugs and power up the machine. in the ceiling of the chamber, but there are no obvious connections to anything electrical. What is this place? Dr. Schuster? Is that you? Dr. Schuster? Look at this. It appears to be covered in some kind of hieroglyphic language. I've not seen anything like it before. Why are you whispering to me? There's no need for that. What is loose? Do you hear that? My God! What happened? I seem to be in some kind of jungle. I can't be certain of where I am. Log entry 43. Date, January 23rd, 1940. I cannot be certain what happened to Dr. Richtofen 
once the test has commenced. He just disappeared from the machine into thin air. I have searched the area for days and have no evidence that he is anywhere. I am afraid I might have to scrap the... Not scrap anything. We've done something. Something wondrous. Shh! Do you hear them? Dr. Richthofen, you're alive! I'm more than alive, Mr. Schuster. Is the device still intact? Yes, but what happened to you? Ah, oh, something wonderful. That chamber was incredible. The wonders we can learn. What are you talking about? Are you all right? Get in the matter transference prototype, Dr. Schuster. We have worked. <laughs> Gentlemen, for two long years we have toiled here and at Eagle's Nest to build our fortifications. For two long years, we have taken equipment to build up our labs. For two long years, we have worked under Group 935, believing that Dr. Maxis truly wants to help the world. For two long years, we've led a double life. Today, that all ends. I bring to you what this project is all about. What I have worked to keep from my enemy. What is it, Dr. Richter? Alien. It is an ancient Vril machine. And you, Dr. Groff, are now the lead scientist here at Griffin Station. You will be the one to discover how it works. We first must discover what it does. Nine, Dr. Groff. I know what it does. It has a direct connection to another dimension. Let us see preposterous. No more preposterous than teleporting all of this gear to the moon or to building Griffin Station. Is it? I suppose not. How do you know what it does? I have found many interesting real artifacts here. I have decoded some of their language. All signs point to this device being a stable gateway to the ether. Dr. Richthofen. I'm aware of a project being run by Dr. Maxis at Derice concerning Brill. As am I. I am going back to my post at Group 935 to continue the charade. I will be finding out just how much information Dr. Maxis has on Brill. Once the machine is operational, I will enact my plan and return. Gentlemen, let the games begin. This is so loud! Log 1075. Dr. Schuster and I have spent countless hours with the pyramid device in an attempt to understand how it functions. We have made little progress until now. Today, we uncovered what looks to be some kind of tank with a glass-like front. The glass itself seems... I've got you now, rats! Kill it, Schuster! Hey. Did you see that? Look, the capacitor is illuminated. The tank is filling. The machine. It seems to be activated. What did you do? I think we just discovered what powers this machine. This is Eagle's Nest. Status update, over. Hello, Doctor. We have the shipment and are carrying out your orders. It's grim work, Doctor. All in the name of science, Doctor Graf. Continue until the tanks are full. Yes, Doctor. May God have mercy on us all. Eagle's Nest, this is Griffin Station. We have an update. Over. Dr. Cross, have you made any progress? Yes, Doctor. The machine is ready and awaiting the conduit. <laughs> Very good. I will proceed with Operation Shield and join you shortly. Security Protocol 935. Yes. I will dispose of Dr. Maxis and that little brat personally. Do not touch anything. Mr. Schuster, report. The tanks are full and the shields are down. The machine is humming nicely. Good. And what of the shipment? Most are buried outside of the base. The live ones we've sent back to Kustva Poston. Excellent. And there's nothing left but to wait for Dr. Richthofen's return. Perhaps this is a good time to work on my low-gravity putting in the biodome. Yes. A little leisure time for Intruder detected. Receiving bay. This is not a Security. Report. This is not a 
Can you repeat? She's coming right, Tolton! Get her! Get back here! Nay! Do not let her! Damn it! Dr. Schuster, find a way to get her out of the pyramid. I will contact Ed and let him know there has been an incident. How did she end up there? No matter. I know what must be done. In the meantime, see if you can find Dr. Max. Perhaps he can talk some sense into her. Did you not deal with him already? Yes. But if the child ends up there, then Maxis must be somewhere too. Find him. How do you propose? Dr. Gross, I cannot do everything for you. I leave this in your capable hands. There is much to be done. Yes, Doctor. Oh, and Gross? Yes. I keep an eye out for an evil-looking dog while you're at it. Schuster, power it up. System nominal. Accessing your device. Interface via MTD active. Accessing MTD. MTD integrity check nominal. Awaiting input. Excellent. Bring the sample. Analyzing MTD. Creating profile. Excellent. Now, scan for target. Yes, Doctor. Target located. Bring him here. Immediately. Greetings, Dr. Maxis. Schuster, I should have known. Where is that rat, Edvard? Where are we? And how did you get me out of that wretched... Time? None of that is important right now. Allow me to fill you in. Samantha. Honey. Daddy is here. Come, dear. Please. Open the machine. Daddy will not let them hurt you anymore. Honey. Daddy knows he's made some mistakes. I am truly sorry that you were put through so much. When your mother died, I could not bear the thought of losing you, too. That's why I kept you so close. I did not mean to neglect you. I just wanted to know you were safe from harm. Daddy! I love you, Samantha. I love you, too, Daddy. Can you do something for me? Something very important. Yes. Kill them. Unidentified electronic voice. We have been attempting to activate your spire as instructed, but one of our members began hearing the other voice you warned us about. He turned on the rest of us and shot one member of our crew and wounded another before we restrained him. Hello? Hello? Damn this thing! Why doesn't it answer when we call it? Hello? What's that? Who's there? Yes, I can hear you. Huh? Of course I have. There's, there's nothing else. No, I, I won't do that. How do I know you're not lying? You, you could be making all that up. 
Well, sure, that, that only makes sense. Prove. Prove. Yeah. But... No, no, I see. Sure. Really? But they're my friends. Yes. Of course I see now. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. For you and the flesh. Hello? Hello? Are you there? We have activated the spire as you instructed, but the shamblers are swarming our location, and we can't hold out against their superior numbers for long without aid. Hello? Please, come in. It is vital that you instruct us on that... You think you're so smart, huh? <laughs> you think you can manipulate everybody into doing what you want, but we know the truth. Calculating works, and you sinister agents? Hmm? You mean to destroy this planet and kill us all? <laughs> We're not gonna help. No way to help. So yeah, you keep talking. But no one's gonna hear you because we're destroying everything. Everything electronic is done with evil radio box thing. Hello, hello. This is Jackass Flats calling any human community within broadcasting distance. We're located at standard map coordinates 37 degrees 07 north, 116 degrees 03 west. This is a warning to anyone contacted by a group of mysterious voices. Several of our party began to hear the voices and their competing instructions and incompatible demands drove a wedge down the center of the camp. Half of the camp is carrying out the demands of only through electronics. This voice is a big, long, and its ultimate goal is unclear. The other voice cannot be heard by humans who have not been on the long madness this way lies. Neither of these instruction sets will understand. Those of us who have not chosen a side have been hunted by both sides, seeking to force us to assist them. Oh God, they stop! Attention all on this channel. This is George Barkley, former assistant director of the CDC facility in Druid Hills, Georgia. Prior to the destruction of our headquarters, our research found evidence that contaminants are now infecting the very air we breathe. As such, exposure of some sort appears inevitable for all survivors. Symptoms are variable, but most subjects display short-term memory loss, psychosis, delusion, and paranoia. Short-term memory loss has also been reported, but as of yet, I have been unable to confirm this. We advise all individuals to monitor their fellow survivors for signs of the above symptoms, paranoia in particular. Ask yourself, are those closest to you really who you think they are? Are they following their own secret agenda? Are they perhaps plotting against you? The dangers presented by such symptoms cannot be overstated. It was with deep sadness that I myself was forced to euthanize 14 members of my own team. My condolences to their families. I hope this message serves as a warning to all survivors. We must all do whatever it takes to ensure our future as a species. Thank you.
There is but one path to enlightenment. Just as they would consume us, we must consume them. We are the living, and we are the dead. We are the flesh, and the flesh is us. We will not starve. We will thrive. My name is Stanley Ferguson. I was a guard at Alcatraz from 1933 to 1942. Today, I'm going to give you some insight into one of the more interesting tales from the prison's history. Over the decades, Alcatraz has seen more than its fair share of daring escape attempts. However, few were as audacious as the one undertaken by four inmates on New Year's Eve, 1933. Thought to be the brainchild of an inmate by the name of Albert Arlington, the outrageous scheme was as unlikely as its mastermind. It's believed that Arlington, a.k.a. the Weasel, somehow convinced three other inmates that he had devised a foolproof plan to escape the rock. It was a plan that would see them literally taking to the skies on a makeshift aircraft of Arlington's own design. Just how the Weasel managed to convince these hardened criminals that such a plan was even possible remains a mystery to this day. What is known is that no such plane was ever built. Instead, the group's plans for freedom soon descended into bitter argument and infighting. With the plan falling apart, anger and frustration would ultimately lead to a brutal altercation between the misguided Arlington and his former co-conspirators. Armed only with makeshift weapons, Finn O'Leary, Sal DeLuca, and Billy Handsome lured the unsuspecting Arlington to the roof, where they intended to exact a bloody and violent revenge. And so it was here, beneath the dark and stormy winter skies, that the hapless Arlington met his grisly end, bleeding to death on the cold concrete roof. For their participation in the murder, the three collaborators were sent to death by electric chair. Justice came swiftly. On the morning of January 19, 1934, the execution order was carried out. Researching element 115 continues to yield unforeseen results. The conversion process creates localized energy fields, which appear to function as portals, bringing forth objects of indeterminate origin. It is my hypothesis, however outlandish, that this transfer of matter may actually be occurring through space and time. I believe the answer may lay with the broken rune stones located at the mound. Perhaps channeling sufficient energy from the conversion generators to their location may prove fruitful. The ancient texts describe an artifact known to them as the amplification rod. It is my firm belief this item is instrumental to harnessing the energy of the elemental stones. Unfortunately, neither the rod nor the stones have been recovered from any of our dig sites. I feel we must push forward regardless. As such, I have drawn up plans to create replica rods based on the descriptions from the main chamber. I will instruct Richtofen to begin fabrication immediately. It is by chance of fate alone that we unlock the seal to the main chamber. Repeated efforts to use brute force proved ineffective and left the men exhausted and frustrated. In an effort to alleviate the tension, one of the soldiers brought a gramophone to the chamber, along with a recording by a group of performers known as La Source Noire. To our astonishment, as we listened to the first few bars of music, the seal itself began to open. I cannot help but wonder if other such recordings may similarly reveal other areas of the catacombs. When I awoke this morning, I learned of mysterious events that took place during the night. Men working on the installation of the generators reported seeing ancient figures emerging from the mound. I would doubt their story, but for the fact that by morning, many of the men were either dead or missing. When 
five is channeled towards the ancient stones, an energy field appears to drag unknown objects into our reality. Is it possible that Element 115 is disrupting the space-time continuum itself? How else could an ancient box created eons ago bring forth weapons from different eras, perhaps including even our own future? Further study is needed to understand these powerful and unpredictable forces. The child's voice calls to me more frequently than ever. At first, she spoke only of her imprisonment in a mythical realm known as Agartha. Now she claims to be my daughter, even though I know no such child exists. I fear my sanity may be slipping away from me. Hey, Mr. Rapp, just checking in. So I'm here, finally. Taking in the sights, sounds, and smells of Mork City. I know you sent me here to write a piece about the city's bustling nightlife and theater scene, and the characters that inhabit it, but things are getting kind of strange. Even though no one seems to want to talk about it, something is definitely off about this city. Just last week, there was a media shower. A freaking media shower. And everybody acted like it was no big thing. Then, the mold showed up. All over the city. In the dark, damp alleys, there's a strange kind of fungus growing. It looks weird and smells even weirder, but... Nobody really says anything. Then people started getting sick. At first it just made them delirious, confused. Then they really got sick. It was like they were wasting away. People finally started talking about it. I spoke to one guy in his 80s, a fruit seller, at the local market. He said something similar happened in New England in 1882. When I tried to press him on it, he just lowered his head and ignored me. If you ask me, something definitely ain't right here. Hey, Mr. Rapp. So, I went by the market again today. For some reason, the fruit seller was much more talkative. Even if what he said was more than a little crazy. He told me that when he was a boy, his uncle would get drunk and start talking about how a dark force cast its shadow over the city. How good and evil were battling right on our doorstep. And that the only thing holding back the forces of the apocalypse was the ancient order of the keepers. Well, even if what he said was more than a little crazy... I'm not sure he was. Even though they're scared, or maybe because they are, people are talking more. Asking around, I've heard more than a few whispers about this ancient order and the Keepers. I think it's some kind of cult. They say you can hear them chanting sometimes. From beneath the city. There's all these rumors about human sacrifices and freaky shit that even the police won't investigate. Because they've been paid off, or because they're too damn scared. I'm not sure what to believe anymore. Hey, Mr. Rapt. So I tracked down all the people you asked me to look into. I sent you a telegram with all their details, all their contact numbers. But I gotta be honest. I'm getting nervous. These last six months you've had me working like a low-rent private dick. When really, I just want to be a reporter. It's not that I'm ungrateful. I know the checks you've given me have been more than generous for services rendered. It's just all this stuff you've had me do. Tracking down ancient artifacts in the South Pacific. Finding all these strange metals and rocks in Russia. And still, I haven't even met you face to face. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Rapp. I think maybe the mood in the city is getting me a little... Making me nervous. Antsy. Uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to you finally getting here. As you can see, these documents give some indication as to the considerable amounts of money we are talking about. My client would never have signed the authorization on these loans. Nonetheless, there it is. In black and white. Signed by the missus herself. Nero's family estate is not what it once was. Even if these documents are genuine, we'll need some time to get our affairs in order. I would advise your client that our company intends to aggressively pursue settlement within one week. Fifteen days at the most. Look, I need to make a call. My secretary will see you out. Please understand that you yourself are not under any suspicion at this time. This is merely an informal interview. Yeah, yeah, I know. Can we just cut to the chase? The chase? Excellent metaphor. Or is it an allegory? I can never remember the difference. You want to know about my partner, Jack Vincent? You're a good detective. So what do you want to know? That he's a loudmouth, show-off, more than a little rough around the edges? That he's a drinker, a smoker? How about the fact that he's got a wife that scares him more than any fucking criminal out there? What do you want me to tell you? Is Jack Vincent on the take? Listen... 
The more I talk to you, the more I'll get a reputation around the precinct. Can we maybe do this elsewhere? Putting aside your enormous self-interests as a promoter, what would you like to say to boxing fans everywhere about the upcoming fight? Uh, particularly with regard to this last-minute substitution, uh, Floyd Campbell? I'd like to say that Floyd Campbell is a credible opponent, despite how the bookies may see it. What about the fact that fans would much rather see the number one contender facing off with the champion, your champion, as opposed to this little herd of journeyman fighter? Look, there's no doubt that Floyd Campbell is the underdog. Nevertheless... Are you using Campbell to keep your big moneymaker away from opponents who could be just a little too dangerous? The champ doesn't avoid anyone. But, but nothing. This interview is over. No further questions. As you know, I'm looking to cast the female lead in my new picture. And I heard that you have quite the roster of up-and-coming talent in this town. Can you maybe tell me a little more about what kind of woman you're looking for? I'm looking for an all-American girl. A real beauty. I heard you may know an aspiring actress by the name of Jessica Rose. The burlesque dancer? Ha <laughs> uh, She ain't exactly peaches and cream. More sugar and spice. I heard she's a real firecracker, if you know what I mean. I'd like to meet her. Give her a screen test. Leave it with me. I'll get back to you. To any survivors of this realm, I am truly sorry. I wish I could offer you some words of comfort, but I cannot. It is my hope that I can rid the universe of the evil that has plagued us for so long. But in my heart, I know many more dimensions will be lost forever as we continue our journey towards peace. Forgive me. Group 935 has defied all those who doubted our cause. Since the discovery of Element 115, we have achieved so much. Our weapons program alone has advanced beyond even our wildest expectations. <laughs> Furthermore, the fact that we have been able to establish a permanent base of operations on the moon itself leaves me filled with optimism for the future. We can literally do anything. Given that it is now over two weeks since contact was lost with Dr. Richthofen, Along with the fact that all intel would appear to suggest that the Doris facility itself may have fallen to the enemy, I am forced to take drastic action. As of now, and for the foreseeable future, I have decided to assume full operational command of Group 935. All further tests involving the MPD are on hold until such times as we can guarantee the safety and security of all personnel currently based at Griffin Station. And so it pains me to say, we have to assume that Operation Shield is unlikely to succeed as originally planned. I have a very good memory. At least, that is what Rick's often has said on more than one occasion. Myself, I am not so sure. Recent events have led me to conclude that exposure to the MPD may in fact be corrupting and clouding our cognitive processes. Speaking to my own personal experiences, I am reminded that I had a dream about Maxis's daughter, Samantha. The child may have been a frequent visitor to Eagle's Nest, but the idea that she could be here on Griffin Station, the moon, defies explanation. It is essential that we re-establish contact with Eagle's Nest in order to fully understand our current predicament. Despite the fact that all testing of the MPD has been put on hold, we have nonetheless observed a series of unprecedented and, dare I say it, erratic behaviors exhibited by the pyramid. Comms, interference, and power outages have become commonplace, leaving many fearful for their own safety. The perimeter guards on the exclusion zone have reported hearing voices emanating from the MPD. Though external recordings do not corroborate their testimony, several individuals reported hearing the same exact words. I must go to her. The loop must be closed. While most accounts claim that the words were spoken by an unidentified individual, several seem to believe that the quotation came from Dr. Maxis that, I know, is not possible. Such is the increasing atmosphere of paranoia 
that we have taken to ensuring the placement of survival suits throughout the facility, just in case essential life support systems should fail. Our allies in Division 9 have made great strides with their own research and development, though I must confess to having had my own doubts regarding the feasibility of their more ambitious weapons designs. Successful field trials suggest that we may be able to deploy the specimen as early as this winter. Assuming progress remains on track, we may finally be able to break the stalemate on the Eastern Front. The reality itself is shifting. I find myself reflecting on memories. I am no longer sure are my own. Beyond the window, I saw a wasteland stretching as far as the eye could see. I saw a scourge visited upon the earth. I saw the children withered before my eyes. That was before, before he came. Samantha has been returned to me once more. As have you, Edward. As have you. He explained everything to me. He will explain everything to you. Though his very presence defied logic, defied reason, he told me that he would help. I could not refuse. The siren has not sounded in many months. I am confused by the changing world around me. I look at my hands, and they are not the hands I remember. The wrinkles, veins, and liver spots that textured my skin have disappeared as though time itself was unraveling against its natural order. Is this the end or a new beginning? After so long in isolation, we had begun to believe that we were the only survivors of the catastrophic event that had shaped our lives. Supplies were beginning to run low, and I was forced to prepare for the worst outcome. Just as I feared that we were truly alone, just as I feared that the end was near, there was a knock at the door. You swore a promise to me, Edward. It may have been a long time ago, but I am sure you will not have forgotten. You swore to follow my instructions, to comply with my every order. You swore to enact whatever plan I conveyed to you, all in the hope that we could overcome the chaos that we ourselves had created. You have kept your word. However much it pains my heart, I owe it to you to confess. I'm sorry, Edvard. I have withheld certain truths from you. Directive log 203.1. Now that the 115 contamination of the Red Army is complete, the Valkyrie drones have been programmed to probe the ruins of the city. They will find any resistance trains and attempt capture. As directed by Dr. Groff, I have updated Valkyrie 7 and 8 to penetrate enemy lines in an effort to secure any survivors for study. Regrettably, however, contact with Valkyrie 8 was lost after it engaged one of the targets. Directive Log 203.2 Specimen 33 is no longer responding to recall frequencies with 100% consistency. It is essential that this behavior is corrected before Dr. Croft's inspection of our forward hatchery next week. I have made several frequency adjustments that I believe may correct the undesired behaviors. Commencing test. Imprinting frequency modifications. What? Oh no. All personnel, evacuate the area. Directive log 223.1. Though it appears to be a slightly inferior copy of the German Riese model, the Russian gigant robot has proven to be a formidable unit. Unlike the Riese, the gigant is armed with a high-energy beam weapon fired from the cranial dome. Like the Riese, its highly durable construction means it can withstand most conventional attacks. However, the robot was never designed to withstand dragon attacks leaving it extremely vulnerable to their fire. Directive Log 240.2 Though German Dragon units have proven devastating to the Russian ground forces, the enemy have nonetheless found a weakness to exploit. 
A prototype weapon known as the Asalon Lance uses 115 charged rounds to weaken and penetrate their hide. The Russians have been quick to retrofit this new weapon onto their surviving mech units. Directive Log 272.5 Intelligence confirms that Project Rasputin has yielded the creation of a new enemy type we have not seen before. Dubbed the Russian Mangla soldier, these units are equipped with high-caliber armament that has proven highly effective against our ground units. Their shockwave attack disrupts movement across a large area, even when our troops are hiding in cover. Additionally, their strong armor plating has proven highly durable to conventional attacks. However, these enhanced combat abilities come at a cost. Their relatively slow speed leaves them vulnerable to being outmaneuvered by the enemy, particularly when significantly outnumbered. Additional vulnerability comes from the unit's cannon, which is prone to explode when fire is focused upon its power regulator. Hello? Testing, testing, te- Do you hear me? Testing, testing, te- Actually, I don't know why I'm doing all this. I'm almost 100% certain that you can hear me. So let's not fanny about. Okay, where best to start? The universe is big, really big. So try to imagine the biggest thing that you can, and then imagine you're way off. It's a million, billion, trillion, uh, zillion times bigger than that. Actually, don't worry about the size. It's fucking huge. We'll just leave it at that. More important than its humongous proportions is the fact that the universe is a living, breathing thing, ever-changing, ever-shifting, existing across and beyond time and space itself. With me so far? All right. So you've got this universe, this big, changey, already volatile universe, and then you shatter it with a hammer, a metaphorical hammer, and it cracks and splinters into a million other universes, all coexisting at exactly the same time. Do you have any idea how difficult that is to keep track of? I may be omnipotent, but I can't be everywhere. Now, if it had been entirely up to me, you numbskulls would be the last people I would entrust with this, but due to factors outside my control, you're all I've got. I know there's a lot going on. I know it's a lot to take in. But the universe is deeply unstable right now. And things are going to get a lot worse before they get better. Crazy as things are, I will try my absolute best to give you all some one-on-one -on -one time. Some good old-fashioned TLC. Do this right, and everything will be okay. Pinky promise. Maxis. <laughs> he was the first. The vessel you constructed for him back in World War I somehow shielded him from the influence of Element 115. He opened the portal between the worlds and, well, that's where and when shit really went tits up. The world within the world got turned upside down and inside out, if you can imagine such a thing. So, anyway, uh, it was around then that I was forced to step in. Samantha, oh boy. You ever heard the phrase, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned? Well, that fury is even worse with a little girl, especially one as confused as that poor child is. She really didn't get much of a chance, did she? Right out of the gate, she was thrown into this madness before she could ever figure out exactly who she was. Still, that's all ancient history now. She's safe in the house. Okay, here's a quick cheat sheet. You all fought in World War I. Whoopee! You were badass heroes. That was true. That happened. Later, some other versions of you ended up as lab rats in some crazy World War II experiments. Experiments that left you a bit 
kind of not that smart. Your memories were mostly erased, and you just kind of bumbled and stumbled around in time and space, oblivious to your past and future actions. You know how people say that every snowflake is unique? That every single one is an individual, a one-of-a-kind, irrefutable evidence of the miracles of Mother Nature? Well, it's not true. Snowflakes aren't all that unique. There are really only about 12 different designs. The point I'm making is that you lot are hardly one-of-a-kind snowflakes. You were fragmented across a multitude of different realities, but each and every one is basically the same. You are all you. The liar, the braggart, the drunk. The one who didn't know what he had until it was gone. The good soldier. Never disobeyed orders, never broke protocol, still kicked ass all the same. The loyal servant. A warrior out of time, born too late or born too early. Honor bound to dying traditions. The man-child, broken and twisted by a life burdened with knowledge. Living like a soul who is perpetually drowning. You need to stop thinking in terms of originals, old and new. It, it's not like that. When you look in the mirror, it's still you. If you crack that mirror, you see multiple reflections. It doesn't mean you've actually multiplied, does it? Honestly, I'm not sure why I'm trying to explain it. Shit's fucked up. Please, fix it. You see, the thing is, I'm meant to stay on the sidelines, not really supposed to get involved. Free will and all that stuff. Oh, uh, that was my idea, by the way. However, I do see stuff now and then that makes me go, ooh, ooh, that's not good. I really should do something. But the thing is, all I can really do is give things a little nudge. So a seed, plant an idea, see what grows. See what sticks. Where do you think all these magic weapon boxes come from? The chalk drawings on the wall, the magic ammo drops, the gumball machines. Do I need to go on, or do you get the message? I just hope you appreciate it. Where are they? They should have arrived by now. Oh, Maxis, you worry too much. In fact, aside from worrying, what do you do these days? As far as I can tell, you just repeat whatever I say in radio messages. <laughs> no offense, of course. It's important to feel relevant. Big fan of what you... do. Look, they're here! Well, well, well. Sometimes free will does work out. Look at how he's used it. Trying to right wrongs instead of skulking about in the house talking into a microphone. Good call on the windows there, Max. This whole process can get a bit messy. This is Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara. I am transmitting on a secure channel in the most dire of circumstances. The Pentagon is under attack from an unknown enemy. As of this moment, I am safely ensconced inside a janitor's closet. Unfortunately, I fear the President and the VIPs may not have found similar safe haven. <laughs> From what I have observed, our attackers may be blighted by some kind of sickness. Either that or they're just dirty hippies under the influence of hallucinogenic substances. I can only hope that this message will bring rescue. Until then, please... Pray for me. Our revels are now ended. These are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the basis fabric of this vision, the cloud cap towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, 
the great globe itself. Yea, all which it inherits shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little lives are rounded with a sleep. Field report. A quiet retort. The mission has all gone south. It's Johnny here. Smokey is near, most likely with meat in his mouth. We've been here for ages. I ran out of pages, but now have a mic to record. The mission has failed. McCain must have bailed, and now we must fight off a horde. We came to Farouk with low ammo and luck, and now Smokey's lost his head. We went down the halls. They bit Smokey's balls, and now he walks with the dead. They call me Banana. I worked at a cabana. I rhymed to keep myself sane. Though Smokey is dead, I'm holding his head, which right now is eating my brain. Midway, this way of life we're bound upon, I woke to find myself in a dark wood, where the right road was wholly lost and gone. I, me, how hard to speak of it. That rude and rough and stubborn forest. The mere breath of memory stirs the old fear in the blood. But when, at last, I stood beneath a steep hillside, which closed that valley's wandering maze, whose dread had pierced me to the heart root deep, then I looked up and saw the morning rays, mantled its shoulder from that planet bright, which guides men's feet all right on all their ways. Dash four eight zero eight N two seven one four zero six one one five four eight four zero. I hope you're receiving this transmission, Peter. If you are not then all hope is lost. You must know by now that we failed to contain the asylum, that we had to move the experiment here. Location. The numbers will guide you. The giant must remain. At all costs, repeat, Der Ries must... At all costs. The DG2 experiments continue. You'll be our only advantage now. Find Dr. Richthofen and Dr. Maxis. They may know what's going on. The use of element 115 is dangerous at best. I'm not sure if we can continue here. We've lost most of our best. I hope you get this. I hope it hasn't happened there too, but I'm almost out of hope. Six, zero. drunk Soviet and a warrior Japanese soldier, all working together. So I started with a simple one, something about two guys named Brock and Gary, looking for Arthur. They finished like dead for your head start there. Next thing I know, I'm in this jungle, and it's hot and humid, and the sky goes black, like dark black. I look up, there's an eclipse, and these things start chasing me, like zombies. Trust me. I know how it sounds. I've been fighting them so long now. I should be dead. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure I have died, but it just keeps going. I've started setting up these traps. Pretty damn proud of them if I do say so myself. Wait, I hear something. Can't help but think they hold some kind of key clues. We should investigate the stepped pyramid for some clues. I think we should get the hell out of here while we still have the chance. But Come we're on. so close Just to proving the existence of- ah! Ugh, finally. Sorry, the only thing more annoying than the undead are those two guys, whoever they are. Anyway, I've been trying to get some bars on myself for days and I'm having no luck. I swear, if I die a few more times, I may actually lose it. At least then I'll have those agents off my back. So I just sat down with Stanley Ferguson, night guard at Alcatraz. He told me a heck of a tale. A few years back, four engines, three monsters, and some weasel had this brilliant plan to escape the rock. I know they sound like real geniuses, these guys. Anyway, this weasel was quite the talker. He had these guys convinced they could escape. He told them he could build a plane, and that together, they'd all fly right off the rock. Now the weasel had plans and drawings and everything. I saw it. But even if they built it, no way that baby would ever fly. These mobsters, it's lost on me. They were smart guys. I mean, Sal DeLuca? No way you can convince a man of his caliber something so absurd. So I guess at some point the whole sorry truth came out and the weasel found himself cornered. They did him good. Left him bleeding to death on the cold stone roof. They all got the chair for him. That was that. Sad to think that three guys like that could find themselves swinging, all because they bought into the lies of a delusional combat. Anyway, no clue why Mr. Rapp wanted me to meet this Stanley first, but I'm headed to the city now. Something about tracking down three doozies and a floozy. Oh yeah, not to mention those artifacts in the South Pacific and Russia. I don't know what that's about. I never even met this guy. Likes to stay to the shadows. Real weirdo. But the money's good. Redline party for the waterfront district. Maybe it'll all make sense when I get there. After many weeks of failure and frustration, Dr. Maxis finally achieves the breakthrough he had been searching for. The results were immediate and startling. In the case of Subject 26, his instances of violent outburst were non-existent. His docility appeared. Permanent. Unfortunately, while we prepared to implement the treatment on the other subjects, there was an incident. During his field test this morning, Subject 26 attacked a handler. 26 and the handler were both destroyed. Maxis believes Subject 26 only attacked the handler. He does not know I was attacked as well. I have observed a developing pattern of high fevers and cold sweats. My thoughts are erratic. My relationship with Ludwig is complicated. I fear I cannot keep this secret from him for long. The break in programming coincided with the flashing lights and loud noises of the fire alarm in the test facility. One moment. What is it? You wanted to see me, Ludwig? Sophia, yes. Do come in. Sit down, my dear. Have some tea. Is everything all right? No, no. Everything's fine. Drink your tea. I heard a nefarious rumor earlier regarding the field test with Subject 26. Are you feeling all right? Of course. Just strange, this rumor. May I see your arm? What? No. Why do you need to see my arm? Relax, Sophia. I would never hurt you. You know that, right? Of course, but... And you know I care deeply for you. Yes, but... You know, everything I'm about to do is for your own good. This is Dr. Ludwig Maxis. 
beginning preliminary trials for the Strategic Operations Planning Heuristic Intelligence Analyzer. wasn't the best idea to leave the most powerful artifact in this or any other dimension just lying on the fucking table. But in all fairness, Maxis was a bit of a wild card. I mean, you remember he was actually just a little drone the last time you saw him. Anyway, he's in the summoning key now. Buggered if I know how we're going to get him out. Something else I should probably clarify. This is it. The ether. The infinite. Otherwise known as Agatha. Or is it Agatha? Well, whatever way you slice it or spell it, it's the reality beyond. Beyond the world you know. Beyond your perception. Just so we're clear, I'm absolutely not talking about death. That's a whole other can of worms. Speaking of which, you know how people say when you cut a worm in half, both parts keep on living? Well, they do. Kind of, for a bit. But then one of them dies, not sure if it's the arse or the head. Well, that's the problem with worms. They're a bit short on distinguishing features. Uh, uh, what was the point I was making? In the beginning, and believe me, there was a beginning, everything was in its proper place. Time was linear, just as it should be. But a little thing called Element 115 changed all that. Especially when, what was it again? Oh, yes, when Group 935 came along. Once they started messing around with it, they buggered everything up. 115 shouldn't even exist in your dimension. But nonetheless, here we are. Bloody teleporters. Once element 115 came along, the Apothecons weren't far behind. Have I mentioned them yet? The Apothecons are beings that feed on energy. Wait, that's a... Oversimplification. Energy is a rather broad term. I mean, it, it may be better to explain it as the spark of life. The purest form of energy that ever existed. Is that better? I'm not sure. Sounded a bit hippity-dippity new agey when I said it out loud. Anyway, this energy, the Apothecons, feed on it. They conquer and consume dimensions. It's kind of their thing. The ball-crushingly bad news is that their appetite is ferocious, voracious, insatiable even. They're hungry. Very hungry. Bottom line, if you don't sort shit out, they're going to gobble up this universe just like they gobbled up so many others. Your sins serve only as an invitation. An invitation to an evil beyond your imagination. I will lead the way. I will show you the path. Only through me, the Shadow Man, will you find your redemption. You do realize that he's manipulated you. That's what he does. Dr. Monty is just one of the many names he's been known by. The Great Dragon? The Beast? Is this ringing any bells? Beelzebub? Lucifer? Satan? 
The devil? He's not even a real doctor. I would know. I know what you did, Richtofen. I know you found the Cronorium. You have suffered long enough. Why do you not embrace the cool warmth of the Apothecons? All your pain, all your suffering could be at an end. That is what you want, isn't it? Do you not see the power Dr. Monty holds over you? Do you not see you are being deceived? I can help you! Only through me can you find salvation!